Here's Brody Brazil. This is not going to be a long video, nor do I even know where it's going to take me. Honestly, my thoughts are so scattered. New information comes in by the hour, it seems, but the overwhelming thought for me right now is that I'm a bit concerned on a lot of different levels. I know most of you think of me as the sports guy and you think that's what this video is about. And certainly there are some reservations about sports and how that might go in the near future, but also in life too. The pandemic, seeing another surge. Now, we've been through this before. Most people are way more protected than they've ever been before, but it is kind of that sinking feeling of the unknown, of changes happening, and honestly of necessary precautions that just need to be taken if you want to be a responsible person. I'm not going to dive into all the levels of that, but I, I just want to say, you know, concern right now for a lot of different reasons. I will kind of enter into the sports conversation, but again, the overwhelming one has nothing to do with sports. As for the NHL and the NBA and the NFL, I think it's very important to clarify that they are three different beasts right now. Football's outdoors, football's once a week. There are more people involved. I'm not here to pretend like I know the intricacies of their protocols and procedures, so I'm going to put that one aside. Basketball, yes, you're indoors. Yes, you have a similar schedule to the NHL, but you don't have nearly as many people, nor are they constrained on a very small bench, nor do they play in a 200-foot enclosed, like encapsulated surface. I actually think that the NHL, and I, I've said this last year too, the NHL has the hardest time with health issues, pandemic, epidemic issues, because players are in such a close proximity, the bench, the constant changing of players, contact, the amount of players on the ice, the amount of games every week and with the league every night, this is very difficult. Now, they've shut down the cross-border games. That's another element why the NHL has it toughest among all professional sports trying to continue their schedule, trying to eventually complete their schedule. I know the NBA has a Canadian team, but the NHL has multiple, and I don't know what you do now. You know, you've, you've shut down the border, essentially, between U.S. and Canadian teams until after the Christmas break, but what do you do right after that? If you can't get restarted, do you use... That three-week Olympic break, if you can determine right now that you're not going to use it in February, do you just rework the entire schedule like here and now? Maybe you take two weeks off in January, try and get a cool-down effect. Maybe you restart it in mid-January. You remember, that was the same time they started it last year. Maybe you implement a lot of the familiar procedures that you had last year to, to continue your season. Now, let me just say, the season last year was extremely difficult for players to execute. The amount of separation and isolation required, and I don't think anybody who came out of that season really said it was enjoyable. Now, safe and enjoyable, two different things. But I also want to point out, like, I am concerned about the mental health of these players and the you know, team support staff and everybody else who has to kind of go into a relative bubble and live through that type of season if, in fact, that's what we're about to enter into. I also think, and, and I don't know if this has ever happened before, you know, the NHL had slated out a regular, relatively regular 82-game schedule for each team. What if each team can only get to 65? What if a couple weeks or months are required to slow things down, to restart it when it's safe and it makes sense? Would that be the worst thing in the world? No. And again, I am looking through this uh, through the lens of priority here. What's most important? To not be part of the problem, to keep everybody ha uh, healthy and safe. And I mean, even on that note, you know, the Sharks had no relation to their games being postponed. These were about their opponents, the Vancouver Canucks and the Edmonton Oilers, teams from Canada that are now shifting back north of the border. And I am happy that players on the Sharks get an extended break. I'm not even going to go into the strategy of, well, what does it mean that they won't play a game for 10 days? That, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a side story right now. That's not the main headline. 
they're reassigning a couple of players, Jasper Weatherby and Jaden Halbawak. <laughs> Halbagawax, sorry. I'm still getting used to that. Halbagawax. It's right there, Brazil, but it just it's still hard to pronounce. Halbagawax. Jaden Halbagawax. I don't know if it'll ever roll off the tongue. Anyway, reassigning them to the Barracuda, let them play more games. That team is not shut down for now. But additionally, defenseman Brent Burns has been placed into the NHL's COVID-19 protocol, effective December 17th. Well, that was now three days ago, but obviously the Sharks have not played. I don't even think they've gathered since the 17th. So, you know, it's obvious why that's retroactive. And I know a lot of people are thinking subconsciously right now, doesn't he have an active Sharks Iron Man streak going? Yes, he does. How important is that right now in the bigger picture of all this? I just hope Bernsey and his family are getting through this. That's number one for me right now. I want to acknowledge that, the other part of it, the streak, but I want to state what I think is most important. So even the Sharks right now are going through some continual issues. So many teams across the league are dealing with this. Again, I'm, I'm isolating here on hockey, but basketball and football have their own issues. If you're somebody to think that, well, you know, sports in real life, like what's the connection? I mean, what did it take for everybody to recognize how serious all of this was back in March of 2020? It took the NBA shutting down on a, was it a Tuesday night? It took the NHL, same thing, following suit. Every league said, grinding to a halt. That big wheel that's turning, we just hit the emergency brake. Now, we've all been through this before. So I think the difference between back then and right now is experience and tools at all of our disposals that I hope we're, we're using wisely. So it, th- this should not be as much of a fear thing as much as it is a take it seriously thing. Um, I don't certainly look. I don't want to see a sports shut down. I liked, I liked life when it was a lot more optimistic several months ago, but that's not where we're at right now. And there's a lot of human conditions mixed in here too. Emotional, emotional, mental fatigue, physical fatigue. The holidays are upon us. I I totally get it. I get all of it. I'm just here to say that based on what sports is telling me right now and the foresight that they have into this entire situation, I am significantly concerned about the next Weeks and months. Um, I think if I'm if I'm gauging this correctly, I, I think sports will be fine and, and businesses do a better, way better job at this now. Again, the experience, we're, we're supposed to take the experience from, you know, prior similar situations and apply them to now. But overall, yeah, I'm concerned. So I'll leave it with that. I wonder how you guys are all feeling too. Um, you know, didn't mean to make this video as a, as a fear thing, but concerned. Am I paying really close attention to all of this? Um, do I have a, you know, a less than optimal feeling in my, in my gut right now? Yeah, I do. 